Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Club Podcast, where we try our best to stay on topic as we talk about movies. And what movie are we talking about this week? Uh, this week, to continue with our blockbuster series, we're talking about The Omen, 1976. Yes, we are. And um, wh- why'd you pick this one as our blockbuster of 76? This was a movie that I kind of stayed away from my entire life because I thought, oh man, this is going to scare the crap out of me and mm-hmm. I'm going to be scarred for life. I was not scared one bit. Yeah, um, I kind of why I was a little confused why we picked The Omen. Because this is the same year as like Rocky and I made all the money, but like... But we're just sticking strictly with summer blockbusters. Yeah, the movies that were released in the summer. Yeah. So, yeah, The Omen, um... Yeah, I remember seeing this a long time ago when I was, like, a, a kid, uh, and I remember it, like, being scary back then, and I watched it now, and this is... Is this movie bad? I don't know if this movie's bad. It's not bad, but it's just not scary, or at least <laughs> maybe we're just too jaded by <laughs> what we have now. I'm Listen like the story of uh, 70s filmmaking. We have become jaded by you. No, it's just... You know, people are being decapitated. There's dog attacks. There's a pretty gruesome hanging at the beginning. Uh, yeah, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not scared at this uh, at all. I mean, if anything, the chanting kind of like, I was like, oh, okay. I don't like this. And then we got into the movie and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not scared at all. Okay, this is weird. Yeah, because... Okay, um, the, this movie is so weird because... The first two acts of this movie are pretty good. Yeah. But that third act is so slow. The movie is trying not to be a 70s horror film where it's just all atmosphere and no, like, payoff. There's, like, it's, like, um, all, 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 it's trying to be all juice, no squeeze, Mm -hmm. but it's, like, man, this movie is so 50-50. Gregory Peck is... I think way too old to be playing uh the character he's playing. I think uh, you're right, he's doing a pretty good performance. It's just it's Gregory Peck. It's Gregory Peck, but he, him like I see I see Robert Thorne, uh, a a scholarly gentleman in his mid sixties and his twenty something year old wife, and he's like I don't know why we can't have a baby, darling. I well, this is kind of weird. I'm Gregory Peck, and I'm like weird. Mm-hmm. And then you have like the kid and. Damien, you name your kid Damien. Just I I knew weird. some Damien's growing up. I mean, were they troublemakers? Yeah, yeah. You can't. Yes, name your kid Damien. You get a troublemaker. I, I don't want to. Yes. I don't want to be weird about it. But that that's just factual information. I mean, I wasn't even expecting Damien to talk in the movie because I've only seen the trailer. I thought, ooh, he's, he's gonna he's be mute the whole time. I'm like, he's not gonna say anything, and his silence is what's gonna really make him scary. And I was like, oh no, he's a little boy. And I'm like, I'm expecting him to like you know really creep me out. And I'm like, no, he's not really creeping me out. Uh, that's that's the thing. The movie isn't scary. It's just creepy. And halfway through the movie, it turns into a mystery thriller. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, we already know the answer to the mystery. Yeah. Because ten minutes in, we know Damien's the Antichrist. Yes. The poster gives away he is the Antichrist. Yeah. So it's it's uh yeah it's the omen. But we're we're gonna get into it. We're gonna we're gonna really um voice out our opinions and give you reasons why we think of what we think of. Yes, give everyone the elevator pitch of what the film's about. So the film, uh, released in 1976, stars Gregory Peck, and he plays Robert Thorne, a diplomat about town. He is the diplomat in uh Italy, based in Rome. In Rome. Well, Rome is the capital of Italy. It's it's in Italy. No, I know, but I'm just saying he was based in Rome. He was based in Rome, where the Romans do. Not Rome with Sublime. Oh God, I love Sublime. They're my favorite <laughs> band. And a Sublime with Rome, like I, I'm sorry, it's just not my my jam. Like, I, there's one song, "Take It or Leave It." I can, I can, I can get around on, but like the rest of the. I mean, he's got a good voice. He's, um, but it's just. It's not Bradley. It's Noel. not Bradley. He doesn't really sound all that much like him. No. It's, it's one of those things where, man, you're a pretty decent Sublime cover band, but you're not Sublime. Like, yeah, and it's. 
It's really sad because I've oh god, I wanted to see Sublime in concert for years and years and years and years. Remember but, when you know Bradley Knoll died when I was like b- born. Remember last year when they were touring and I was about to buy tickets and I'm like, where is this in California? I'm like, I can't find the city. And I'm like, well, the tickets are decent. So I'm like, let me see. And I pulled it up on Google Maps. It was in Canada. And I was just like... You saw the CA and you I, were like, oh, California? I'm like, sweet. I'm like, okay, we'll drive, you know, an hour, an hour and a half to wherever the venue is. And I'm like, that doesn't look right. And I was like, oh, it's Canada. And I told you because I'm like, oh, it's funny. I thought it was here in California. And you're like, I'd totally be down to drive, you know, do a day trip to Canada. I'm like... Yeah, we're not going to do that. I mean, boo, if you got the tickets, I would have gone by myself. Fuck. Uh, yeah, that I that mean, is something that you the said. The tickets are already bought. Like, I'm not going to waste them. I mean, them. they weren't. Yeah. But yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, so Robert, sublime. Robert Thorne is based in Rome. He is the diplomat uh, for the U.S. government to Italy. And his wife is giving birth to their first child after difficulties trying to, you know, have a baby. Mm-hmm. And he arrives at the hospital to find his son is dead. Dun, dun, dun. But there's a very helpful priest who meets Mr. Thorne and says, Yo, I know your kid's gone, but I got this other one over here. He was also born June 6th at 6 a.m. And his mom died, so... The same second that your son died, I think. Swapsies? Swapsies, we can do this. And thus, he gets Damien. And Which is, I think, the real moral of the story. Don't lie to your wife. Just don't lie to her. Oh, there's some parts in don't, this. Don't don't take the, the free baby. Because I feel like this is something that you would do. You'd be like, he looks nothing like us, but here. Ooh, he might have, you know, some uh, some warning signs. <laughs> I would, uh, but I'm one, not going to tell you anything, boo. I would I would never do that to you because I, I've seen the omen. I know the warning signs for Satan babies. I, I ain't about this life. But the other thing is, like, this movie is so full of, like, 70s, like... Plot holes? No, 70s mansplaining, where it's like, yeah. oh, my wife, uh, she's, oh, she's seeing a doctor, but mm, you should talk to me before you talk to my wife mm-hmm. about what medication she needs. Or she's like, hey, uh, I'm, I need to go get this very private medical procedure done that, you know, should only involve me, but I need you to sign off on this. Hint, hint, there's a very court case going on about it yeah and her husband's like well no the priest warned me and said this you know this baby's gonna be killed by the satanic kid we took in but i don't think so (laughs) i mean giving gregory peck the the benefit of the doubt here it was the fucking 70s and he's probably like s tier 70s husband right now it's just but i mean she's but kathy is so spot on with you know hey yeah this is our child and i'm using you know air quotes this is our child and I'm feeling kind of off about this. And Gregory Peck, well, I keep getting warning after warning after warning. But, you know, I'm still going to play it cool. And, and that's the thing with this movie. Because, okay, the rest of the movie, basically, they bring home Damien. They raise Damien. Spooky shit starts happening around Damien. Priests start arriving and saying he's the Antichrist. Gregory Peck's like, I'm not convinced because I'm Gregory Peck. And then more crazy shit starts happening. Yeah, because he's good. And that's the movie. He's good the first five years. It's, yeah. it's, and we, then, and we get that the, nice montage of them as a happy family until year five kicks in and everything kind of goes to shit. Yeah, when the um, uh, hellhound arrives. But yeah, that, oh my god. You know, let, let's actually go through that because like the movie starts with, you know, the Rome, he gets the baby, mm-hmm. you know, there's the montage, he's five, and the birthday party. Yeah. The birthday party, 10, 15 minutes into the movie... And it's like, oh man, big rich people birthday party. There's a carousel. They have pony rides. They have like rides, like actual like little theme park rides. Yeah, they they turn their, I think it's the front yard of the house. It's like it's an estate. Yeah, they they turn the front yard of the estate into a theme park for a five year old's birthday, which he may or may not remember. I mean, do you remember your fifth birthday? No, but I, I I wasn't I was put on the spot. Uh, Jesus, I I don't remember mine. But granted, you know my family was poor, so of course I wouldn't remember my fifth birthday. This these are rich people. These are also I think that's what the movie is is implying. It's like oh yeah, they're political and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But Damien's set, you know. Yeah, they have ushered the Satanists have ushered Damien into uh, a very 
um, wealthy and powerful mm-hmm. uh, world, right? For the which, setup. Which I was kind of down to watch the trilogy. Because I was like, I need to see what happens from here. You mean the quadrilogy plus uh, the remake? I think, yeah. it's. Like I wasn't going to watch the remake. There's four movies in the remake. I actually saw the remake in the theater. That I'll get into that one because that's a whole other movie. I but... almost watched that one because I was searching for it yesterday. And they used the poster for this movie. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll watch it on HBO Max. And I'm like, that's not Damien. And I was like, oh my god. HBO Max, Tubi, I think even Hulu does this. Where if there's a remake of a movie, they'll use the same poster for both of them. And it's you don't realize it's a remake until you like start it yeah. or you check the date or something like that. But it it's it's, you know, eleven o'clock at night. I'm a little drunk. I just want to watch, you know, a movie. And I put it on, it's off. Oh, this is the remake. This is horrible. Oh, no, I've been I've, I've been played. I watched it on Tubi yesterday in the middle of the day, because I'm like, you know what? I don't wanna be scared, you know, shitless during the night watching this I'm like i'll watch it in broad daylight and i'm like man not scary at all even when the hellhound shows up at the birthday party and i was just like like is he supposed to be the devil or is he a demon like what is going on yeah because again they say oh there's like demonic stuff but you never see demons mm-hmm. you see people you see dogs and you have implications of satanism and mm-hmm. also you know the 666 birthmark yeah. and all the all that nonsense that the priest starts spouting, which the, isn't the, like... The fire that happens in the, the, the nursery ward. Yeah, which also, I'm not saying nonsense because it's about Jesus. It's nonsense because all the priests are make, are just talking out of their ass in this movie. None of what they say is based in any semblance of reality or theology or, or religion. This is all bullshit. It's a movie. Yes, but speaking about the movie, the beginning of the movie where they're at the, the, the birthday party... We get the first kill, which is probably the most famous one, mm-hmm. where it's the the nanny and she's like, "I think oh. that one shocked us the most. That oh, was the most shocking far. thing in the movie by far, because she's the nanny. She's like taking care of Damien, and the mom's like, "Oh, I'm gonna take pictures with the paparazzi with with my child. You go do something else because mm-hmm. you're the nanny." She's like, oh, "Okay," and then like. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, she's on the roof of the building. Like of, five minutes later. Five minutes later. And she's yelling, it's all for you, Damien. All for you. And she fucking jumps. Mm-hmm. And like hangs herself off the side of the building in front of God and everyone. And that, it looked really good. Yeah. For 70, what is it? 76? 76. 76 effects. And that being a like a dummy, it's a good looking dummy. It's a good looking effect. Yeah. Like, and it's, like, that one's actually, like, shocking because, oh, shit, shit, that, that lady just fucking hung herself. Yeah, I mean, at least for us, that's what we associate with this movie. Mm -hmm. And to have it happen ten minutes in was just, like, wow, I thought this was going to be leading up to, like, the climax of the movie where things are really getting out of control. Or a midway point where it's, like, oh, after this, Gregory Peck knows there's something wrong. Yeah, but I was just, like, just to kind of this in right in the beginning it's like getting sucker punched with what just happened it's it's kind of like the slasher movies that mm-hmm. come out after this in the late 70s and into the into the 80s where oh you open with a kill in mm-hmm. the first 10 minutes and then the pace is relentless you yeah. have um the characters like stumbling around they're setting up their relationships their conflicts and there's this looming threat of violence or this looming threat of a killer or mm-hmm. in this case, d- this demonic presence around and everything is building up to the big climax where there's just bodies left and right and all this other stuff. And that's how the omen works. The first, I would even say the first hour, uh, the first 90 minutes, the pace is relentless. There's something being revealed. There's characters getting knocked off. There's stuff happening. And it's it's really engaging. But yeah, the fucking nanny dies in the first 15 minutes, people. You want the iconic omen stuff? Just watch 15 minutes. You you got it. Yeah, the rest I of mean, the movie I think is I would, pretty mild. I think I would push it to maybe first 20, mm-hmm. because that's when we get the creepy nanny. Oh, who God. wasn't hired by either of them, and they've figured I, this out. Miss Baylock is the, one of the biggest plot bullshits I have ever seen. Because... She shows up after the old nanny dies, and she's like, I'm the new nanny. May I see the boy? The Not li- even new nanny. Governess. The, yes, because these are rich people. Mm-hmm. I'm the new governess. Oh, you're 
oh, let me see the boy, because, you know, the, the agency sentenced me. And, you know, the thorns are like, oh, go right ahead, I'm Gregory Peck. And they and go in. And it's like, oh, we'll show you. She's like, no, let me introduce myself to him. Like, sure, you just came off the street and you want to meet with my child in private. Yeah, okay. Like, really? Here, here's, the, here's the lineup of the <laughs> shit where, if, again, if I was Robert Thorne, I would have fired her ass immediately. Once she shows up, you know, unannounced, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, the agency hired me. And the second I realize that me and my wife did not, did not call this person, mm-hmm. she's getting the fuck off my property. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, okay, you know, maybe she was sent by an, the agency that I, you know, whatever, like, get the nannies out of. Mm-hmm. Fine. You're getting a background check. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I want your references. I want to know who the mm-hmm. fuck you are. You know, like, you got a W-2, you got a driver's license. Or when it's like, oh, we're going to my my friend's, um, we're going to my friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. And it's at this Episcopalian church, which, what happens in the movie? Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, Damien doesn't want to go to the church. He wants to go out to the park. That's much better for him. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't think you heard me, because you're my employee. Mm-hmm. get my child down here we're going to the church and mm-hmm. then she starts arguing the moment she starts arguing with me she can pack up her shit and leave yeah cause... also when she brings the fucking rottweiler into the house that shit i'm getting my gun <laughs> that that's not fucking I mean, lying i mean that is i will give the movie that is a scary scene where he's just you know because traditional horror movie it's always dark in the house no one turns on a light for nothing of course and you know gregory peck's walking towards Damien's room and then the dog just appears out of the shadow i'm like oh i'd and, be and shitting you, bricks and you got that rottweiler mm-hmm. growl and it's like and he and gregory peck is eyeballing mm-hmm. this fucking rottweiler and this rottweiler wants some wants some atticus finch mm-hmm. and then she and then the nanny comes out and like oh we found this rottweiler out in the garden Damien Dan- really took a liking to him yes don't you want a good watchdog for when you're out and about away from Damien? don't you want him to be protected and i'm like Bitch, I w- oh get the fuck out of my off my mm-hmm. property. Also, he's an he's an ambassador, right? He's yeah. like so his bodyguards, the people who protect his children, are probably like the Marines or the CIA yeah. or like Secret Service or whatever. So I'm like, why the fuck you need a guard dog? My guard dog is a is a Marine from Alabama. Like that's that's my guard dog. Jesus Christ! But in this movie, it is the scary Rottweiler that just appears. On the estate grounds. Yes. But I know you had a, a big um, issue with Mrs. Baylock for probably all the reasons I mentioned. Yes. Yes. Yes, How- that, that would be pretty much it. But just, you know, the conversation between Kathy and uh, Robert. Well, I didn't hire her. Well, me either. Oh, that's kind of weird. And instead of, you know, running, get away from our child, get out of the house, just, huh. Well, maybe that agency did hire her. Like, absolutely not it's it's a thing where that is that is again one of the major plot holes or plot messes or just bad writing of the movie where the parents in this seem like kind of neglectful or just not engaged or just dumb yeah because they're like "Mm, mrs baylock sure you can watch the kid it's fine you can be alone with our child even though we have no idea who you are Mm -hmm. or the other parts where because because kathy is like when when they're taking her to, when they're going to the church to go for the wedding right mm-hmm. and damien he freaks out because he's the antichrist and we know he's the antichrist in the first 15 i think that's the only time that i feel intimidated by him because you know she's like oh he's trembling we don't really see that but when he starts to attack his mom it's like oh, okay he cold cocks her i'm like okay now i'm kind of afraid of you but the rest of the movie he just acts like a, a regular five-year-old. Yeah. I mean, granted, like, in that moment, it's like, oh, he's throwing a, a major tantrum, right? That's what's going on. And that's Wait. what actually got the actor who plays Damien the role. Because when they were doing the screening and the testing, Richard Donner was like, okay, I want you to come at me. Just, you know, let me have it. You know, let's go, bro. And I guess the actor that plays Damien, I don't know his name. Uh... Uh, Harvey Spencer Stevens, which I think this is his only movie. Yeah, I I think so. Um, I mean, he came at Richard Donner the way that he came after Kathy in the movie. And he was like, yeah, okay, uh, go get his hair dyed black. And he's in the movie. And I was just like, 
Yeah, because that's kind of scary. It was kind of reminding me of Chucky a little bit. He just needed some orange hair and it'd be like, <laughs> this is a Chucky movie. Yeah, well, well the, that's the thing. It's, in the moment, you're like, oh my god, this, he's, he's like, going crazy. He smacks up Kathy. He bruises her face. Mm-hmm. Like, he's throwing a tantrum. But, like, me now, in hindsight, I'm like, wait a minute, he's a, he's a five-year-old throwing a tantrum. Like, tell me wrong, you know. It, probably, this is probably frowned upon today, but I'm a five-year-old throwing a tantrum. I'm pretty sure I'm just getting bent over the knee and just, I'm going to be spanked until I calm the fuck down. Yeah, but I think that the way that Granted, they- Granted, I'm not the Antichrist, so. No. I don't know. Because, I mean, there's throwing a tantrum and there's attacking and he's fully attacking his mother. And the fact that Gregory Peck has to get back in the car and basically put him in a headlock. Yeah. I'm just like- Okay, this is way, way more than just a tantrum. Yeah, yeah. But and I, again, it's it's my mindset of like I'm a grown ass man, and that's a five year old. I, I, I'm just saying I am sure I can handle a five year old. But can you handle a five year old with the Antichrist? I mean, I'm I'm sure a belt can, but that's besides the point. So here's the thing: he starts freaking out, and oh man, I'm all, I'm losing my train of thought here. Okay, we're talking about The Omen, right? Yes. <laughs> cool, I was getting the movie mixed up with something else. But, um, yeah, he starts freaking out, he's throwing this tantrum, and he he does nail Kathy really hard. Oh, and after yeah. And after that, you know, Robert Thorne is like, hey, Kathy, well, maybe, maybe we should go uh, have a doctor have a look at him. And she's like, no, no, like, I think he's fine. He's just, he just had a hard time. And I'm like, he literally saw his nanny hang herself in front of everyone. And you're just like, he's fine. Phil's character. There's, this movie's kind of glossing over. He's got a weird, things. you know, large adult Doberman sleeping in his room. Yeah, yeah. He, he also has this nanny that's oddly obsessed with him. And the yeah. last nanny was so obsessed with him, she called out to him after before she killed herself. This is for you. <laughs> oh, God. And it... Jesus fucking Christ, this movie is fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kathy and Damien, they go to the zoo, and I I was like, I already know. I'm like, I know what's gonna happen. The animals are gonna be afraid of him because he's the Antichrist. Animals are able to sense. And that's the story of this stuff, that animals sense evil, Mm -hmm. and the baboons attack. Yeah, that was kind of like, I'd be freaked out if I was in a car and... The animals are just trying to attack the car. You know, you know why that happened. You know, you know stuff about that scene. I do. That's a gonna be another part of this episode. The the massive amount of trivia that this is a cursed film, cursed by Satan. Yeah, kind of. You know, you think you're like, oh, okay. You know, how can a movie be cursed? Come on, a couple of coincidences. And I had seen that episode of cursed films about this movie, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of creepy. And then I completely forgot about it. And I looked it up yesterday, and I'm like, oh, and then that happened. Oh, and then that happened. I was like, my god, yeah, this is the, like chapters the, of the things. The Cursed Films episode on Shudder, gloss, like, it's like the bullet points. They're missing all the other weird shit mm-hmm. that happened in this movie. Also, the Cursed Films on Shudder is actually kind of fun. Oh, yeah, it's a good series. Yeah, my favorite is the Exorcist one. I think I've watched that one, like, twice. That one's fun. I think the one that scarred me the most was... What was it? The... Stop watching things that scar you for life. Was it the Twilight Zone movie? Oh, that one's sad. That Yeah, that one was just, like... I wasn't expecting that. And I was just like, my God. I'm like, I, I, I don't think I could watch that movie. Just knowing what happened to have the you, children. Have you ever seen it? No. Okay, because it's... The Twilight Zone movie is weird because I think it's three or four like short films inside mm-hmm. one film. It's an anthology movie, yeah, um, kind of like Creep Show or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's and one of them's like John Lithgow and he's doing um Fear at Twenty Thousand Feet. Mm-hmm. It's the same one with like William Shatner where it's um there's a thing on the side of the plane. Yep, and it that was actually really good. So yeah, that scarred me for life. Uh, but the actual show, uh, Curse Films on Shutter is a great series because, you know, there's behind-the-scenes stuff that we get with every movie. Yeah. But to have this kind of scary element to the things that could happen on a film set that you don't really hear about is interesting. There's also the thing where, um, there's a lot of movies people call cursed films. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I think everybody knows, like, the, uh, Superman curse, where every actor who plays Superman, there's, like, 
oh, their career dies or mm-hmm. they die or something mm-hmm. tragic happens to them, which is like kind of bullshit. It's like three, it's like two people, two or three yeah. people actually had bad things happen to them. And like, think like 10 people played Superman throughout yeah. the years. But the other one's like poltergeist, like the little girl died mm-hmm. from like this rare disease or something. And it's like, it, it wasn't there was like, a, huh? it wasn't even a, a rare disease. It was, they misdiagnosed her. Yeah. And they were treating her for something else and they missed completely what happened with her and that killed her. Yeah. And I mean there's But I mean there you know, her sister in the movie was murdered by her boyfriend. Yeah, so but you... that was like years later, wasn't it? It was, but it's just the weird coincidences that happen. But I mean with this movie, a lot of it was before, during, and after. And it was just like my god, this is terrifying. Do you just want to get into that? Because I, I think it's super interesting. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to because, I mean, I think we hit most of the key well, scary parts in this movie. Well, we hit the, the the first half of this movie because, like, the second half of this movie, when, the, like, the photographer gets involved and the priest dies and they go to Rome. Also. Where they, which, by the way, can we just agree the whole, the whole third act could be trimmed 20 minutes and yeah. it'd be fine? Yeah, it, it's a lot of... There's a lot of fat on that film cell. And also, as a photographer who has developed their own film before, I have never seen weird anomalies like that, like that on there. I was trying to sit there and figure out, I'm like, well, what is that line supposed to be? I'm like, is this, you know, priest really a priest? Or is he kind of going to be like the nanny where, you know, he's... He's marked for death he, or, or he's, he's a Satanist. Where he's demonic or something. And I was just like, well, what is that? And then, you know... I was like, oh, okay, he's impaled. I'm like, okay, that's what it is. It's foreshadowing. And the photography is like, well, I'm involved because I'm next. And you just see the, like, the gash going across his throat when he's taking the picture in the mirror. And I'm just like, yeah, I've taken a lot of film shots and developed film. And I was just like, nothing like that's ever popped up on my negatives or on my prints where that, it's just... That's another thing. Why is it just this photographer who can see this because at the birthday party there's like i don't know a dozen photographers Mm -hmm. who take pictures and okay maybe he's the only one who got a picture of the priest so he's like oh two and two together so i have Mm -hmm. like you know data but is it only that one picture of the nanny or was it every picture of the nanny because they're taking a lot of pictures that day he just shows the one where you could kind of see like uh it almost looks like a cane like an upside down cane well yeah it's supposed to be like Like the 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 rope yeah Yeah. she's gonna get hung but it was just like you know, he was like, yeah, he's like, I thought it was like a shadow at first. Or the lens, or cracking the lens, yeah. or some but such. I, but I was just like, yeah, you know, I've never seen something on my images or my negatives that I wasn't seeing with my own two eyes when I was taking that picture. So I was just kind of like, I'm like, I might have to look into that to see, you know, if it's happened to other photographers. With It's like... that That, it has happened, but usually it's shit like, um... Like orbs. Oh, orbs happen all the time. Mm-hmm. And people are like, there's spirits. And it's like, no, the the flash caught the dust or something that's floating in the air that you can't see because, you know, it's dark. And then the flash goes off and now you can see it on the film. Or it's like, oh, that's just a reflection that's catching that thing in the background that's shining it into the lens. I mean, a long time ago, I went to uh, Calico. We, we went camping up there. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, had you know disposable cameras took pictures at night during the day and just you know the mass amount of orbs that were showing up in the pictures i was kind of like okay you know it's you know we're in the desert so there's a lot of dust so i can see why there would be so many but then you get some in like weird shapes and it's kind of creepy out there at night because there's just nothing did you psych yourself out oh we were all scared oh god i mean during the day it's fine it's cool you know running through the town but at night, you don't hear anything. Um, I mean, there were there were p- practical jokes that were being played. So, you know, you're just kind of like, okay, the cowboy ghosts of the past are going to get me. I am terrified. I don't know if I'm just jaded, but every every time people tell me about, oh, this is the story about, like, the ghost that visited my home. Or, oh, I was possessed by a demon. I'm just like, you... You are so full of shit, your eyes are turning brown. Oh my god. Like, or it's people who, like, um, there's like, yay, you want to see this picture of these ghosts I took while I was at the the Queen Mary? Hey. Well, I was. Whoa, no, no, no. Queen Mary, that place is haunted. Queen I Mary will, is not haunted. I, uh, 
hand on a stack of Bibles, that place is haunted. I have been <laughs> in the gift shop where no I, 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 I told you that story where that thing came flying off the shelf. My, okay. One of the my, girl that was working the shop was like, Can you guys like not leave me? <laughs> like I'm two, terrified. Two of my friends, they were trying to do this ghost hunters like reality yeah, show, right? I remember and, that. And they um they were like cast, right? It was gonna be a thing where they're oh, they're gonna do like a a seance and try and summon mm-hmm. whatever goes. And they were spending the night at the Queen yeah. Mary, right? And it was like the bowels of the ship where it's mm-hmm. the most activity. They spent the whole night there. Uh, they were like looking for ghosts. They were trying to like l- like look for like anomalies. Mm-hmm. And w- one of them told me it was like, you know, it was, was kind of weird because it's like you're hanging out in an empty hotel. That's basically what it is. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't see no ghosts. Granted, he's also like, he was a little little elevated at the time so yeah. you know but, but i mean I, I take that as a as more proof because i feel ghosts want to fuck with people who are who are blitzed i feel they're going out of the way to find the stoners and being like hey hey let's go fuck with this guy no <laughs> or it's you know they're so relaxed why bother it's like let's actually do something with people that are alert and oh my god it's broad daylight why would this be happening now ghosts only come out at night and it's like Nah, this this ship seen well, war and who who made the point that ghosts come out at night? Is that that's not like that's not written in the rule book somewhere, right? No, but in a lot of movies, it's like <laughs> except for our... except for Poltergeist, where you know the chairs are sliding across the kitchen floor during the day, and they're like, "This is so weird. Let's uh, get bring out another chair." Okay, low key Poltergeist kind of fucking me up as a kid. Oh, I've only my... seen it the one time. Oh yeah, and it's like burned in my brain. Because it was just that terrifying. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the one scene where the guy's picking at the, the thing on his face and his whole face comes off. No, that didn't do it that for me. That didn't do anything? Okay. It's but... the, the creepy clown in the bedroom sitting on the chair. Oh, I didn't fuck with that shit. And the tree but, outside. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, the the house in Poltergeist... Is a real house? Is, yeah, no, it's a real house. I, I don't know where it is. But my cousins up in Fresno, they lived in a house and it was like the exact same layout. Mm-hmm. It was, like, so close. Yeah. And I remember, because I think we watched it there. Oh, God. And I was like, you know, go up to go take a piss or something mm. like that. It's the middle of the night. And I'm like, nah, that's that's fucking weird. Because the kitchen, the exact same layout. Mm. I think they have the same fucking tile. Yeah. And I'm like, this is not okay. Why did you show this to us? Oh, this is horrifying. But, yeah. So, like, Poltergeist has always fucked me up. Not yeah. because of the movie, but because, like, the movie and where I watch it were, like, too close. It was weird. No, it's just one of those movies where, kind of like Dawn of the Dead for me, where I was just like, nope, I can't do it. Uh, I, I know it, you know, scene for scene, because it's just that burned in there. And then and we the- watched it together, and you were like, this movie's, like, lame. Yeah, I was like, this movie really isn't that scary, but I don't think I could say that about Poltergeist. I'm like, I don't think I could do it. You can't go back. Can't go back. Uh, I watched it with my dad, and he fell asleep like five minutes into the movie. So As you do. I'm there the entire runtime alone. It's late at night. Uh, we're surrounded by open windows, so if someone's out there looking at me, I can't see them, and I'm just like absolutely terrified. God, but I this mean, movie, no, it was Omen didn't do it. Omen didn't do it, but all the stuff. That happened to the people making this movie. All the behind the scenes is stuff, terrifying. All the behind the scenes stuff is way weirder. So let's just get into the background of this because it's way fucking weirder. Yeah. So it, to start at the top starts with Gregory Peck because they've casted him in the movie. They're ready to fly him out, and for whatever reason, he decided not to take the flight that they had scheduled for him, and it ended up happening that that plane crashed. Everyone on board died. But to make it even weirder and even more dramatic, the plane crashed into the pilot's family's car. And the family was sitting in the car, so everyone in the car died, too. And it was just like, what? And, and uh, what happened to his next flight? Gregory Peck's oh, next flight that next he Next flight out. that he booked himself to get out to where the movie was being filmed uh, was hit by lightning. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone else that was part of the production... Uh, I think it was the writer or yeah, the... Yeah, David Seltzer, the writer. He took a separate flight because he was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Let's split it up. His plane was hit by lightning, too. And luckily, you know, nothing happened to either of their planes because planes are built to... Kind of take that. To, yeah, to withstand lightning. 
But it's just like, okay, you know, the first plane crashes. These two planes are being hit by lightning. Weird. Yeah. And then let's see. Uh, oh, that was another fact that I didn't know. I guess uh, the executive producer, once everyone got to England and, you know, got to the location of where the filming was going to happen, he decided to plan a dinner for the cast. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, you know, I, I scheduled it. We have reservations. The restaurant blew up before anyone, you know, from the cast got there. And it's just like, oh, okay. So we've got, you know, three plane issues now, a blown up restaurant. Yeah, it was, uh, like, I think that one was like an IRA bombing. Yeah, because there was a couple of explosions that happened nearby and they figured out it was an IRA thing. But it's still, it's like, what are the odds of that happening? Oh, it, it, we're still not even done with the production. We haven't no. gotten to the baboons. No, we haven't got to the baboons. Um, I mean, I think where I'm, I'm leading right now is the part with the dogs in the cemetery. Okay, that I remember that part in the movie because that happens like third act. Yeah, that's when Robert Thorne and the photographer they go to mm -hmm. Rome and completely leave Kathy behind because you know Damien threw her off a, a third story balcony, mm -hmm. and Robert's like, "Oh, you'll be fine, honey. I'm Gregory mm -hmm. Peck." And they find out that Damien was birthed by a jackal, and mm -hmm. Robert's um, son was murdered in the in the crib, mm -hmm. and they're now attacked by hellhounds or dogs. Just yeah, just it's, dogs. It's a bunch of Rottweilers that appear out of nowhere which would be terrifying because it's a cemetery and you know suddenly wild dogs are ready to attack you so i felt very uncomfortable in that scene because i was like oh god you know just being you know faced with that is scary but the animal trainers that were in that scene to you know to be the stunt people basically were giving the commands to the dogs to stop they refused, and they kept attacking and attacking until they finally were able to break up the dogs. Um, oh, and, yeah, they had to come in and drag them off. They had to drag them off because the commands weren't working when the commands had been working prior to that. And then we have, you know, the animal trainers. I think one animal trainer was killed. I know about that one because that was the animal trainer in charge of, like, the safari mm -hmm. park with the, um, with the baboons. I know a lot about the baboons, but with that animal trainer... After the movie was, I think, finished, he goes and he's, like, sleeping in, like, the safari park or whatever. And he's eaten by a lion in the night. Well, like, a lion eats him. Well, from what I'm reading, it was um, one of the animal trainers. He was killed the next day after the baboon scene. Oh, yeah? But he was killed by a tiger. And I guess he was either walking too close to a cage. The tiger reached out with its paw, broke his neck. Because he, he tried to grab him, like, towards the cage and just instantly killed Jesus, him. Jesus, I didn't know it was like that. I thought he was eaten by a tiger. Or eaten by a lion. No, no. It was just lots of scary stuff. And I, let me see. I lost my place. Oh, okay. So the special effects designer in this movie, he faced his own tragedy after the film. He was the one that, you know, did the decapitation scene with the photographer. You know, mm. he loses his head. So apparently after the movie, him and his wife were driving and uh, they got into a head on car crash and his wife was unfortunately decapitated. Just like in the movie. Just like in the movie. But what he had said, you know, in hindsight, you know, leading up to this accident that I guess they were kind of like on this country road and they were near a town called Omen, spelled with two M's, mm -hmm. and it was... 66 six kilometers away and i was just like my god this is just a little heavy-handed there horrific absolutely horrific but the baboon scene because the baboons uh fun fact when they were driving through uh the the car just stalled mm -hmm. it wasn't meant to stop there the camera's inside yeah so all the reactions you see are real and they were, aren't really sure why the baboons just assaulted the car. Mm -hmm. People say it's because, oh, well, they had, like, a, a female baboon in heat, like, uh, tranquilized in the backseat so the baboons would approach the car. Yeah, they, they had a, a baboon in the backseat of the car to kind of get the other ones to react. Yeah, or to, like, approach the car at yeah. all. Because, you know, they're animals. They're not going to, like, approach unless there's a reason to. But, you know, if they could smell that there's an animal in the car and it's of, you know... A certain persuasion. A certain persuasion or of their species where it's like, oh, hey, you know, I smell you, but you're in this big locked box. Let's 
go to it and see, you know, maybe if you need help or something. But it's just the odds of all these things happening that I think make the movie scary. Yeah. Well, it's, because it's once the question s- of, is, is this movie cursed by Satan? I, I don't I don't think it is. I, it might be coincidence. Richard Donner has maintained that it's just coincidences. Yeah, but, but I mean, there's coincidences in this, like, uh... <laughs> this movie's <laughs> cursed by Satan. And I'm like, this movie's cursed, and I'm not afraid of it, but I'm afraid of everything that's surrounding it. <laughs> yeah, which... That's another thing, because, uh, okay, because the movie is so weird once we get into the second half, um, because where we where we left off, I think, when we were explaining it was that that was like the first half of the movie. Yeah. Kathy's is like unsure of Damien. Damien is definitely off. There's something wrong. Kathy sees it. She's going, she goes to therapy while Robert's being um, talked to by the priest, who, but the priest dies. And then he's talked to by the photographer. And they realize after Kathy's, you know, thrown off a third story balcony by Damien, uh, which puts her in a full body cast. Which oh. the priest prophesies that, you know, he is going to try to kill this child, this unborn child, which he does. Yeah. And then he is going to kill your wife. And then, you know, Robert's still like, still not enough evidence for me, you know. There is so much of this movie where I'm like, I would have been sold to. I've been sold on this pretty pretty early on. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know where it would be, but definitely I would have gotten around to it. Granted, the priest is a loon, but back back to it. The whole point up to oh, the whole movie up to that point is really pushing that. Oh, Robert's just being resistant. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't want to give in. That you know, there's something totally wrong. Kathy, all in like. After the baboon thing, she's like, this kid is evil. And then she gets thrown off the balcony. She's like, yeah, no, this kid needs to die. Mm -hmm. It's over. But he still needs convincing. So him and the priest go to Rome to talk. The photographer. Him and the photographer go to Rome to talk to the priest that gave him Damien. And then they have to go to the cemetery and find Damien's mother's body and make sure, oh, we need to understand if this is true. And they find it's a jackal's body. Oh, he must be the son of Satan. And yeah. Me explaining that is like, I don't know, a few minutes. Yeah. That's literally the last, like, 40 minutes of the movie. Yeah, and then, you know. Last 50. It is so much of the movie. And and then you're waiting to see how the photographer is going to bite the dust. Mm -hmm. Because, like, okay, he's shown up on film. He's going to die. How is it going to happen? And then he takes a plate glass to the neck. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, you know, yeah, that can kill somebody. But I'm just like. Really? Just like that? I'm like... Well, the whole thing is like the car also fell into him. and it, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's one of those things where... Oh, fuck. Like the third part of... Like the last third of the movie is where I just... I was starting to tune out real yeah, hard. He, you know, Gregory Peck's given the special knives that he must use to kill Damien. Yeah. And, and also like... the, the exorcist. The expert exorcist who is like... You must kill the Antichrist exactly like so. And Robert's like, should you come with me? Because you're the expert mm-hmm. exorcist and the authority on this. And he's like, no, no I'm good. I'm, 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 just, I'm good, dog. I, I need to stay in Saudi Arabia for this archaeological dig. It's way more important than killing the Antichrist. So much more important. And that that's literally that conversation. He's like, this this dig is more important than killing yeah. the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. For fuck's sake, you can you can take a weekend. Yes. And and he goes back and he gets to Damien and it has to be this whole ritual thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because he has to take him to hollow ground and to the church altar and he has to kill him there or else Satan will live or... Hide in the shadows and take over somebody else. I, 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 I don't know. Yes. But he gets there and he has to be extra sure. So he starts cutting Damien's hair to try and find the 666 mm-hmm. birthmark in his scalp. And I don't I don't know. Is it easy to cut somebody's hair while they're asleep? Especially mm-hmm. a five-year-old's? No, but also the way that he's cutting the hair just with a pair of scissors. I'm like, that's going to wake anybody up. The shh, shh, shh. And then, I mean, especially since it's a little boy and his hair is not that long. I'm like... You're probably going to end up cutting his scalp, trying to cut down to see the 666. I'm like, it would just be easier just to get a, like a beard trimmer 
and just, you know... Well, <laughs> this is the 70s, but, you know, so... Uh, I don't know if they have, like, great beard trimmers or, or you know, shears. Or, you know, just, like, a razor to shave your face. Just, you know, could you start ima- shaving could his head. Could you imagine shaving a five-year-old while he's asleep? <laughs> oh, I That'd mean... That'd be so... That, that kid would be so, so pissed when he woke up. I mean, he's obviously a deep sleeper because he's got to trick the wa- the Rottweiler into going into the basement and trapping him in there. And he's barking and barking. And if this Rottweiler is the devil or a demon, he obviously speaks to Damien. So he's probably trying to warn him. Yeah. But, but he doesn't look like he's, you know, fake sleeping. He looks like, no, he's just knocked out for the night. Yeah. And this is after his mom's been killed, right? Mom's been killed. Yeah. Oh, because... we, we glossed over that. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Baylock, another reason this bitch should have been fired, she murders the shit out of Kathy, throws her off a building, and she just goes through an ambulance. Yeah, I mean, it's not funny, but it's kind of funny at the same time, because you see this in a lot of horror movies where people are thrown and they land on top of the car or on top of the ambulance or on top of the news van. No, she goes right through and she lands on the gurney. And I was just kind of like... Why? <laughs> no, it was just like... I'm like, you see them usually hit the roof of the car, but I'm like, she went right through and she landed on the gurney. So if they needed to take her out of the hospital, they could just kind of like roll her oh, in. God. But I was just like, okay, like, don't laugh. Like That's just weird. I'm like, this is just ridiculous at this point. Yeah, and... So, and he cuts off Damien's hair, finds the 666 mark. I think he um he kills Mrs. Baylock when she comes to try and, like, save Damien. But how no one noticed that he had the 666 birthmark on his head when he was a baby. A born with a full head of hair. We saw it at was the beginning. Was he? We saw it at the beginning. He had a full head of hair coming. Maybe. I don't remember that. But that's... Mm, it is it is so weird. Because they cut his hair off. Then, you know, he kills Mrs. Baylock because she's, you know, evil. And kills her in the most, uh, what would be the right word to say this? The most unique kitchen fight, because she's got, like, barbecue, uh, the, the, pokers. the poker, and then he's, like, got a butter knife and a fork, and I'm just like, okay, I, w- I want to see how- I want to see where this goes. This goes, and yeah, she ends up being, like, stabbed to death with the poker and the butter knife, and I'm like, huh, that's it. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Kind of anticlimactic, but okay. And then, and then he goes and he's and he drives Damien off to um to the church, right? And he gets there and he's about to do it. You know, he's trying to bring himself to kill the Antichrist, and the cops show up. But because he's an ambassador, there's already you know cops and security on the grounds to make sure that he is safe. Cool, yeah. And, but you know, when they see his car speed out of there, they're like, okay, well, he's not supposed to the, leave right now. The first time security makes themselves known and useful is Ooh. is at the end of the movie just to kill Robert Thorne. Yep. They never stopped the nanny nope. when she was walking onto the grounds and obviously, like, invading. Did she have clearance? Does the, Did Mrs. Baylock, do these Satanists have CIA clearance to get into an ambassador's home? No, Portal. Portal just opens up, lets the dog in, lets Baylock in. Low key, I, I think I think portals are used in this movie. It has like, to lowest be lowest of keys, because how they get to and from Rome in like a, like instant transmission, low key. I mean, we didn't get any travel by map sequences where you know half the journey is over because we see our you know protagonists on their way to their mission. It's just no. Suddenly we're in Rome. Suddenly we're back in England. Even though it, it's Europe, so things are a lot closer. But it's like okay, if you're flying back and forth. You've got to wait for your flight to happen. Also, he flies back with the special exorcist well, knives on his lap. And, and, well, that's because he's on a private jet. But oh, you don't true. realize that until he lands. Yeah. So up until that moment, you're like, man, the 70s were fucking different. Man, you can just, you can smoke on a plane. Mm-hmm. You can, you can like, bring knives on planes. Jesus Christ. Oh, they wouldn't even let me get on with shampoo. But, <laughs> but here's the thing. The, the, like, Robert's about to kill Damien. Then the cops burst in. And they, they just light him up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, obviously, you tell him to stop, put the things down, whatever. But they, they light him up. They tell him stop once, and he's like, hmm, nah, he's a devil, I gotta kill him, and then fade to black. Yeah, fade up, we're at the double funeral for Robert and, and Kathy, and they're lowering him into the grounds, and then they're like, Mr. President, the car's ready for you. And the president's like, no worries, I'll be there in a moment. And then it pans down, and we see Damien has now been adopted by the President of the United States. 
Because that happens to any child. Well, okay. I was just like, I get, I give it to this movie because they establish in a throwaway line at at like the beginning of the movie that the um, Robert Thorne and the president are friends. Okay. That it is. I, I I must have missed that because well, I was just say, like, it's a throwaway line. Yeah. It is a it is the cheapest throwaway line at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, because I, I was sitting there, I'm like. Yeah, there's a ton of ambassadors, people that are connected to the president. And I was just like, you never hear? Yeah, sure, I'll adopt them. It's all right. Great PR. Great I guess. PR. And then, you know, I'm waiting for it because, you know, we see him and you, you have the caskets behind him. So I'm just waiting, waiting. And then the smile starts to appear on his face. And I'm just like, it made me laugh because I was like, it's such a trope. But it's also, like, I knew this it was going to happen. It's, it's also, this is 76, so it is, like, it just wrote the trope right here. Mm-hmm. And it's... <sighs> and it's just, like, that's why I laughed, because I'm, like, that's part of, you know, the horror trope. And we get it. We get the, the smile at the end. The like I got smiling. He's like, I so won. I got away with it. And I'll probably get away with it again and again, because there's multiple movies. <sighs> but, yeah, so that's The Omen. Um... What are your what are your overall thoughts on the movie? Cuz I know we kind of shit on it a little bit, but I'm over I still think it's it's a creepy movie. Uh yeah, it's a little creepy. Um just I, just not your your cup of tea. Yeah, I just I really thought I was going to be scared and I wasn't. Uh it was cool to kind of see where a lot of stuff that we see in horror now has originated from. Mm. So You know, I think it's a good movie. I think a lot of fat could have been trimmed on the story, made it a little bit more tighter. For a two-hour movie, this could have been a pretty clean 90 if they they went over this again. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, the the pacing leading up to the first death in the movie, and then it kind of quiets down. So the pacing's just kind of off. It's like stop, start, stop, start. But, uh, yeah, good movie. I think if you're a horror fan... It's a movie you need to watch to kind of add to... It's part of the horror canon, right? Yeah, the horror canon, the horror library. Uh, yeah, I'd say give it a watch. Maybe it'll scare you. It didn't scare us. <laughs> you, uh, you sound so, like, lackluster on it. Yeah, I just thought it was going to be something a lot scarier. I thought Damien really was going to turn into, like, this Chucky kind of being where it's just... The scary, you know, Did you think five it was year old gonna boy. Turn into like a slasher flick? No, not a slasher flick. Uh, not a slasher flick, but something scarier. I thought he was really gonna be out there, like killing people. Damien was gonna be at the forefront of this. Yeah, and it was just like, no. I mean, oh, there's Damien at the billiards table, just kind of throwing the balls around and running around the table like a little boy. Oh, there he is, riding around on his tricycle. I mean, kind of creepy how he's just riding around in circles. And then you get the camera work where they're like shooting up at him as he's riding around, which I thought was kind of cool. Kind of made me a little dizzy. Yeah. But I was just like, "Eh." it's it's one of those things where for so much of the movie, there's not really a, a villain. It's I mean, the villain is Satan. Yeah good villain to have for your story yeah terrifying but, but it's um it's a thing where it the real horror is this just insurmountable dread and this really creepy atmosphere mm-hmm. and and the not and us as the audience knowing that oh we're dealing with like satan we're dealing with evil we're dealing with the demonic but it also Which... it also makes our main characters so um, seem kind of dumb. Yeah. Because it takes, it takes Robert so long to get to the point that the audience knows. Mm-hmm. It's it's like the thing where it's like, oh, it's a mystery story, but we know who the killer is in the first ten minutes of the movie. But it's, and it's not even Sherlock two hours to get there. But it's not even Robert knowing; it's Robert accepting it because he's refusing to believe this, even though there's so much surmountable evidence telling him. There is something wrong with this child you've taken in. But it's, no, I'm going to keep turning my back even though these crazy things keep happening. If I just ignore it, the problem's going to go away. And that's what's incredibly frustrating about this movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can almost see Robert's thing. Because the whole movie is is an allegory for, like, you know, um, I I think it's an allegory for nature versus nurture, you Mm -hmm. know. 
this is the ultimate, you know, um, your child's personality and who they are is decided by nature and, and you had no choice in it. Mm -hmm. Um, because Damien from the onset, they're like, Oh, Damien is evil. He is born evil. He will always be evil and nothing. The thorns can do can change that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, it's a whole thing where I get Robert trying to be like the good dad and being mm -hmm. like, you know, there, ah, well, there's some, there, yeah, he's a little weird, but he's like still my kid. You know, there's nothing that wrong. Yeah, with I him. mean, I felt sympathetic for Damien because it's just he's a little boy. It, so it's like you know. You, but after the baboon attack, or after the tantrum in the ch in front of the church, I would at least have questions. Oh, definitely, but yeah, you know, it's like I have sympathy for Damien because he's a little boy. You know, he wouldn't. Actively choose this for himself. He is the Antichrist. He is not even man. He is a beast. Yeah, and that's what we have. And I think that's what makes movies scarier sometimes is the things that you can't see. And that's why I'm like, I think they should have played more on that element where it's just, you know, okay, we're getting glimpses of the dog, uh, keeping things a lot more in the dark. But it's just like, we're seeing things and it's just kind of like, Okay, that was supposed to scare me, and it doesn't do anything. Nothing. You don't have like Damien creeping around the house and the shadows. Yeah, and I'm not saying the movie's bad. I don't think the movie's bad. No. I think it's dated. Yeah, I think this is definitely a um. You know, last week I was talking about Jaws mm -hmm. and how that felt like a '75 movie, mm -hmm. and this is like this feels like a movie of a bygone era, like. The remake. I was going to get around to it. Mm. I saw the remake in theaters. Yeah. That remake is pretty close to to this. Mm -hmm. It's not shot for shot, but like all the plot beats are in it. It uses probably creepier imagery involved. I know it's way more upfront of like Satanism, darkness, yeah. you know, devil shit. But honestly, and that movie didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. I mean... I feel, I really feel like this, The Omen, the reason this was the big blockbuster it was, was definitely a zeitgeist pick. Yeah. Because we had Rosemary's Baby in 69, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Rosemary's Baby, huge, massive hit. And this oh, movie yeah. is, I think, is taking a lot of keys from Rosemary's Baby. Mm -hmm. Also, we had The Exorcist come out a few years before this. Yeah. And The Exorcist, huge, massive hit. The demonic panic was coming in. Mm -hmm. Like people were, I think people were already talking about D and D is is the devil's game. Yeah, I think we were already getting into that, or you know, people were having that satanic panic going on, and the omen comes out, and with all the scary stuff centered around it, because people knew about all the weird shit. And I that's feel like this the zeitgeist picked, and this is uh, the originator of like the mid two thousands when we got a lot of like. Uh... Was it the exorcism of Emily Rose? It was like every year we were getting another uh, satanic cursed movie. Yeah. And it was just like after a while, okay, there's like 50 of these movies. And I don't want to be mean and say this movie is a ripoff of a ripoff kind of thing. But I don't know. Like this, it, I really feel like if you wanted like atmospheric, like fam family horror, like Rosemary's Baby is probably a better movie scarier scarier i mean granted it, it's directed by he who shall not be named yes we don't but, speak about him but fuck that motherfucker can direct <laughs> a movie he knew how to he knew how to place place a camera but i think why it you know was the summer blockbuster maybe people hadn't seen rosemary's baby and this was their first time seeing a movie of this caliber mm. and i mean we're still shocked about the the hanging scene 10 minutes into the movie yeah so i think it was just it's so kind of brand new to a new generation where it was just like, oh my God, you know, what else is going to happen in this movie? Yeah. I, I just, I really think, yeah, I think people should watch it mm -hmm. because it's not bad. It's enjoyable. Like there's, yeah. no, there's nothing in the movie that you're going to be offended by or just angered by out I, of your out of the minds i really thought oh this is gonna give me nightmares uh i try to stay away from like satanic stuff i i am you hispanic. overhyped this didn't you I, i'm hispanic i'm growing up you don't you know mess with the ouija board uh my grandma kept like a big thing of holy water in the house crosses so i was just like yeah we don't fuck with that shit and i was just like oh man i'm not gonna be able to sleep and i was like no i'm like they talk about it but we don't see 
too much. We see a lot of Robert being in denial. Yeah. And I don't know. It's yeah, I want to recommend it because it is part of the horror canon. Yeah. It's it's definitely a movie you should watch out of just just curiosity, mm-hmm. to be honest, because the movie is kind of fascinating for being what it is. It's a product of its time. Yeah. But I don't think it really holds up all that well. Yeah, I mean, I out of one out of ten, uh, ten being The Godfather, one oh. being uh, Stay Alive. Oh, jeez. Um, I'll give it a five. Give it a five, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Doesn't excite you, but doesn't like disappoint. I mean, it kept my attention while I was watching it, but it was just kind of like, I think they really could have gone another way to make it scarier. Or that's just how we've progressed with filmmaking, where we really need those <laughs> those deep cuts, those scares that really make you think, like, oh my god. But, like, Poltergeist. Yeah. Where it's just, it's just like, wow, this is terrifying, and I can't go back. But a movie that I really hope scares us next week is a movie I don't even know what it is. What are we watching next week? Well, I hope you don't get afraid of it, because... The movie is called Star Wars: A New Hope. Oh fuck! So God this, th- damn it. this is going to be an episode where probably Dean and I fight the most we've ever fought in an episode before. Probably. Uh, okay. I I I do not hate Star Wars. I I like A New Hope. A New Hope is totally fine with me. That's it's his my, favorite. It's my favorite Star Wars film. But I got I got beef with so much of the Star Wars universe canon fandom. I, I, I feel we're going to have to put in some ground rules where we talk about only A New Hope. We don't talk about anything after it. We just talk about A New Hope. Oh, come on. Because <laughs> you will rant for hours and I don't think our listeners want to hear to <sighs> Dean's TED Talk. I guess, I guess. Okay, okay. Well, ground rules. We only talk about New Hope. Mm-hmm. All right. But, but... I I get I get five minutes to rant about Disney. Can I can I get like five minutes to rant rant about like the rest of Star Wars? We can, we can save it till the end. I mean, we didn't talk about Jaws two, Jaws the Revenge. We just talked about J- Jaws two, the Revenge masterpiece has has Sir Michael Caine. Like we didn't talk about any sequels. We glossed over that there were sequels in The Omen. I will all look. Look, Star Wars is different, all right. Cause I got beef, but we'll figure all that out. <sighs> yeah, next week. we'll come up with some rules next week, so it's not a five-hour episode of Dean just ranting and raving. But if you want to listen to us on a different platform than you currently are, you can find us on Anchor FM, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And YouTube. Yeah, go to our YouTube channel, The Film Vault. That is The Film Vault on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Leave us a rating on anywhere. It'd be nice. And if you want to find us on social media, we are on Instagram at The Film Club Podcast, where we post trivia, uh, our adventures, just about everything that we do. But other than that... We'll see you next week at The Film Club. Peace. Peace.